Watch to see how we create this panda marble design with the new non-yellowing poly coat. All right, here we go. So I'm using 28 ounces of poly coat and I've split that up as follows. So I have two ounces mixed with black dye. I have 14 ounces mixed with a white dye and I'm actually using Savage Patriots flooring tint. He's working on some other tints right now, but this works just as well. And I put it in a squeeze bottle so it's easy to put in my cups. And then I have 12 ounces of alloy mica powder and I've mixed everything up and I'm ready to get started. I'm gonna use the roller technique that I'm loving. And I'm gonna pour out my white first where I kinda of want it to go. I fog my edges with some chrome spray paint and some black spray paint and a little bit of white, just so that way there's some background there. So you don't have to overthink this because you're going to move this around. I'm pouring bigger bands of color so it doesn't get ultra busy. If you pour a lot of small colors, it will get busy. So I want to keep this a little bit bigger. I'm just kind of doing a general pour to know where I'm going to push my colors around. Now, when I do my cut through with my uh, roller, it doesn't matter that I've already poured in these angle, right? I'm just using this so that way when I start moving my roller, I have color for it to move through. So don't overthink this part. Just get your bands of color. All right, now I have my black. I don't want black to overtake this design, but I do want black because it is black agate. So you can add as much black as you want. It's just a very small counter that I'm doing. So I know black can quickly take over a pattern. So I'm going to be a little uh, methodical about where I put it. I can always add more later, but hard to take it away. I'm going to pour some of it right through my colors. So before I start doing anything else, I'm just going to take whatever color is on my table or dripping over and I'm just going to tend to the edges a little bit just so that way when I push the colors over, it has something to move over. It doesn't flow unless there's something there for it to continue flowing into. I'm not ultra worried about what it looks like at the moment. So I'm again just making sure I have some material on my edges and I'm gonna push through and make sure it flows over. So any dry spots, you know, I may just take my hand a little bit and just kinda touch it, but my roller is also gonna do that job. Now this far edge is against a wall, so I really don't care what it looks like. I just want to make sure that it is coated. So I'm going to Make sure I don't have any dry spots. Same thing with my sink. Just make sure it has some coating there. So as a refresher, poly coat is a hybrid coating. It is not an epoxy. It works similar to epoxy, but it's not epoxy. So it will not yellow. And that is the coolest thing for me as an installer that I wanna make sure that whatever we install is gonna stay the color that I pour it. And I've kind of avoided anything light or white over the years, um, or at least the most recent years, because we were seeing that things were ambering a little faster than we expected them to. 
and we want to avoid that. So now that we have this solution, now I need everyone to that has used epoxy to kind of forget what you know. Um, this works different. You can't treat it like it is epoxy. It moves different. It feels different. It's thinner, but it actually helps because it's thinner for it to just flow so nicely. So I'm going to take my four inch roller. I have my bucket that was with the clear um, that I mixed everything in with, and I'm just going to prime my roller with it. You can do it with your table drippings too, but you just don't want to put a dry roller right on your surface because it kind of will suck up some of that material and maybe leave a dry spot. It's not the end of the world that you can move it around, but I just want to make sure my roller is coated. Okay. So I'm going to move this through at an angle and I'm going to cut through a lot of these uh, sections. Okay. Cause I want the colors to start to integrate. So I'll start over here. I want to push this black. I really like that black in there. Right through it. Right through the other colors. Okay. I might bring some of it back here. Oh, that looks so awesome. You can just use the tip of your roller. You don't have to do it flat. I often will just kind of lift and turn it I want a lot of empty space in there too. <laughs> I love this stuff. Oh my God. Makes my job so easy. Okay, maybe not easy, but way more fun. So I'm going to push this at an angle here because I want this to create a cool marbling in this section. And push that around get some of that black integrated here. Oh, I love it. Okay, so back is good, front I'm working on. So here I am going to push this through, same basic pattern, but I want to come back because I love when I can do agate like shapes, which are in triangles, and then continue to move this material gently through, pushing any dry spots. So I'm, see, I'm cutting through the colors. I'm not just following the colors because nothing cool happens if I just follow the colors. I need the colors to start touching each other. The dyes and the micas, they all start to fight one another and sell up. You can use your roller to like, you know, roll the back, get make sure that there's material on there, especially on any of your non-visible sides, but even on your visible sides, this works really well. I can see on the sink edge, I can take a little bit on my finger, just make sure it's flowing down that I don't have any dry pockets. So far, it looks pretty good. I'll have to come check the front and these edges. So these edges look really good. I'm going to touch a couple spots that look a little dry and it'll help it flow. So like here, it like hasn't moved much yet. So I'm going to maybe take a little bit, create a little pattern there break up that big solid area. I like that. I'm going to roll it underneath. I can see there's a dry spot here, so I'll just kind of let this flow down. I love this. I absolutely love this. Like, I think I'm done, you guys. This is so easy. So anything I see, like there's a hole, I'll just touch it. It'll start to blend. Anything else that I want to slowly move, um, I can take a stick just like this. And let's see, like I want a little like black vein because there's black on that. You know, I can follow this around, create some really nice 
dainty veining. I really like doing that with the black. So I'm gonna cut through here, make that kind of connect, and let that flow down. Same thing here, I'm gonna get out of your way, sorry. Wow, what this is doing. It's got some really dainty veining back here that I'll show you on the camera. Just a moment, I'm gonna take a little of this black, it's on my stick, and just create some fun tiny veins that are gonna cut through and flow over. This is gonna have a white stone backsplash. So it's gonna be really, really pretty. So I look to see, is there balance? Does it look like real stone? It really does to me. I might add a little bit of black, kind of cutting through here, just a tiny vein. Maybe I'll continue this line. So here it's kind of cutting through like this. I start off to the side. Cut through, turn your stick different directions because veins aren't just straight lines, right? And kind of just cut in where you think that you'd like a little extra detail. Same thing towards this little back side. I'm gonna scoop a little off my table just to kind of, in this empty white space, even though I like empty white space. Sometimes I just want a little something, something extra to fill it in. I really like that. I'll even take some of this extra white, you know, and maybe pull it through to create another effect. Because immediately that white dye touches the rest of it and starts to sell up. So I kind of want a little bit of a white effect going right in front of the sink. I'll let it do its own thing here. I don't think I need white anywhere else. I'm happy with it. I'm on a white kick now since I can do white. I want everything to be white. Anywhere that you've poured like a line or made a line, just make sure that it continues off your surface so that way it's intentional. Help your colors along, but these edges hold so well that I don't have to tape it. I don't have to let it thicken up. I mean, it has the effects that I want just like that. You know, I'm per perfectly happy. Even the cells are holding. I, I love it. This is definitely killer. I'm very happy with it. There's not a lot of black going through here, this little section. So I may take, let's see, I don't really retain any. But I mean, I don't mind the black, I love the balance of the black, white, and gray here. It could use a little more towards just along this line. So, I may take a little here. Just kind of run it through just to get some more detail and balance that color out a bit. That's it, man. That's all she wrote. This is so easy. Double check your edges, always go around, take another peek, check your sink edges. Yeah, this is good. I like this, I'll just add a little bit more here. So I think I might take my roller and add a little bit to that back. Let's see here. I scoop up some on my roller. This is the whole like challenge to walk away at the right time, but I kind of just want a, a little more color right here. So I'm going to scoop up 
some color from the table. I'm just gonna kind of pour it on. The less I do to it, the better. Scooping up with this versus my rollers was a little dry already. Really is the key. And being very soft with your stick because you don't want to leave a bunch of weird squiggly lines. But just adding that little bit to it, I think really helped in the back. I think I might want to do a little of that through this, this bigger bowl uh, band of silver. So I think I'll take some of the drippings from back here. And I'm just gonna kind of run it through this line. Let it drip off that edge. Now you guys, if you wanna see this technique up close and really get a feel for what I'm doing, Register for our classes. So we are starting the Artisan Academy this fall. Look on our website, artisandesignconcepts.com. It's a four day class. You can a la carte it based on what you want. Some of it will include fabrication, a couple days of pouring and some business fundamentals. So that way you can really learn how to take this to the next level. So make sure you check out our website and register soon. We're starting them up in the fall. Hard to show you everything I do on camera. But this, you guys, does not need to be an exotic pour like you've always seen me do. I'm able to get that same really cool look without having to waste so much material. This was only four ounces a square foot. I'm getting cool effects and cool selling. So what I'll do is I'm gonna just double check the front one more time and then I'll take the camera off the tripod and uh, show you what this looks like up close. Okay, this is immediately after. You can see the really cool effects I'm getting. I love how the white sells up like that. See that? Very much like quartz. Definitely more like a panda marble, like I recently did in the shower that I posted. Same colors. Cool effects. And my edges are holding beautifully. I know what you guys think. 